God said, Abraham called his name. And he said, here I am. Yes. Majority of the time, God calls our name. You don't even know. Right. We don't even know. Yeah. We don't even know it's him calling to us. Right. <laughs> we don't even know it's him speaking to us. Right. When a child comes up and says, you don't even know that was God. Right. When you're in the marketplace and they shout out, you don't even know that's God. Right. Unaware. Right. Abraham knew it was God and responded, Here I am, Lord. Right. Yes. Yeah. And he said, Take now your son. Now understand, Abraham waited for a hundred years right. to get this son. Right. So when we talk about the tests of the men and women of God in the Bible, these are tests you not know of. Right. You know not of. Right. It waited a hundred years for a son. Right. No one knows what that's like in this. No one knows what that's like right. to wait for a child for a hundred years. Right. And finally, you have him. The promise, yeah. God's promise to you. Right. The thing you've been believing God for the whole time, right. and He right. gives it to you. Right. Now. He wants it back. He tests you. That one thing you've been believing from, from me for a hundred years. I don't even know what kind of faith that is. To believe to you a hundred years old. See right here where we at, you already are out because you know after 40, no more children. So this type of faith is a whole different level. He waited a hundred years, now he's got his promise. And he said, take your son, your only son, your promise from me, son. Your promise that you waited and believed me for, son. Isaac, whom you love dearly. And go to the land of Moriah, Moriah and offer him there as a burnt offering on one of the mountains of which I shall tell you. Wow. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Meaning, take your son you gave birth to, that you believe God for, right. and I want you to set him on fire right. Come on. and offer him back to me. Yeah. Right. 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 A hundred percent of the church, you're out. When you tell parents now just about keeping their children quiet, they can't take it. When you tell them about, that's what not need. He needs to get his hair cut. He needs to change his clothes. He needs to stop talking back. You can't even take that. Right. You can't even take that. Yeah. Yeah. No, you can't tell me nothing about my children. That, 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 that. But we talk about take them and burn them. That's God. Yeah. So let's think about that now. If the bishop told you, bring your child, we're going to offer him, offer them a burnt sacrifice to God. That's what God's requiring. A hundred percent of the church would disobey and not agree that that was God. A hundred percent. That's how natural we are. Not even thinking, well, wait a minute. If I trust this, maybe God will do something else. Right. Yeah. Maybe if I trust that this is the Lord, he will spare me. Right. We, can't think, we can't think of that. Right. You can't get past the part, you want me to kill my child? Right. Can't get past that part. Right. Not understanding that in this walk, you have to sacrifice all. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. In this walk, you have to sacrifice all. And here's no inside. Here's no inside. Your children are already sacrificed every time you send them to school. You don't even know, but guess what? You're not sacrificing them to God. You're sacrificing them to the wolves. You're sacrificing them to the demons. Your children are sacrificed every day. 
and go in their public schools, they're sacrifices. That's why you have to give them swords and shields. That's why you have to teach them how to devour and how to crush the enemy. That's why you have to arm them with the righteousness, with the full armor of God. So that they are not sacrifices, that they'll be sacrificing those opposing God. How do you think? Many of you are shocked and didn't know that your children are sacrificing every time you send them out there to the, to the wolves. So you're already doing it and you don't even know. Now God requires it? Oh no, I can't. Right. So Abraham rose early in the morning and sadly and saddled his donkey and took two of his young men with him and Isaac his son and he split the wood for the burnt offering now no you know that he's crying the entire yeah. time he's doing this right. his heart is filled with sorrow yeah. Yeah. he's hurting right. badly right. but it doesn't change his obedience Come on. Right. you think because you start crying and you're hurt I'm hurt I'm hurt they hurt me you don't even realize that yeah, in that hurt, God doesn't care that you're crying. He wants that obedience. It may hurt to be obedient. What is it hurting? It's hurting your soul. That's what's hurting your soul is hurting. Not your spirit. Because if you're flaring in your spirit, you already know God's not going to allow this. He's going to deliver me. That's the so, and he split the wood, so he's preparing off the offering, the, the mant or the uh, altar. Right, the sacrifice. And arose and went to the place of which God had told him. Yeah. So not only did God tell him, I want your son, but I want you to take him to a specific place to burn him. Right. God wouldn't do that. We don't even know the God we serve right. right. God knew the whole time he wasn't going to kill the boy. Right. It was a test yes. in his heart. Yes. Yes. It's a test to his heart. Right. Yes. Then on the third day, notice threes. The prophet shut down the hospital power three times right. in different hospitals. Right. Each time it's threes. Right. Yeah. The bishop had three cardiac arrests. Right. On the third one, he came back by the power of God. Yeah. Notice how nothing changes. You see that, right? Yeah. On the third day, you see threes, right? Yeah. From how many years ago was this? Maybe 4,000 years ago? Right. 5,000 years ago? Threes to 2010? To 2012, to 2015, he's still saying in threes, he's still demonstrating on the third? Right. Right. How sleep are we? Amen. Then on the third day, Abraham lifted his eyes and saw the place off, afar off. And Abraham said to his young men, stay here with the donkey. The lad and I will go yonder and worship, and we will come back to you. Instructions all the way from the beginning. The men of God, think about those that are with him. Abraham, you sure you're going to kill you? Why are you going to kill your son? You, just think about that. Those around, were they questioning the man of God? You really going to go kill your son? No, they didn't say a peep. They didn't say nothing. Stay with the donkey. Yep. Help me build this altar. Right. And did as they was instructed. Yes. God to his man, to his yes. man. Right. You see that? Yeah. Yeah. So Abraham took the wood off of the burnt offering and laid it on and laid it on Isaac his son. 
and he took the fire in his hand and a knife filled with tears. He's filled with tears as he's going through the obedience and the instruction from God. And the two of them went together. Wow. But Isaac spoke to Abraham, his father, and said, My father. And he said, Here I am, my son. And he said, Look, the fire and the wood, but where is the lamb for the burnt offering? That's more crushing. Your son knows we're going to build an altar, but where's the sacrifice? So he has his son going through the instructions with him. Not knowing he is a sacrifice. Right. Imagine this. Wow. Put yourself in this. Right. Put your child in that. Right. You're already out. You can't even think. You can't even go into that thought process. Right. Right. So carnal. Right. He said, where is the lamb for the burnt offering? And Abraham said, my son, God will provide for himself the lamb for a burnt offering. Yeah. And the two of them went together. Then they came to a place in which God had told him, and Abraham built an altar there and placed the wood in order. In order. Instruction, everything he did was in order. Was from the order of heaven, God Almighty, and acting it out in obedience, in sorrow, and in order. In hurt, in order. They came, they came to a place where God had told them, and Abraham read that, and he bound Isaac his son and laid him on the altar upon the wood. And Abraham stretched out his hand and took the knife to slay his son. But the angel of the Lord called to him from heaven and said, Abraham, Abraham. Yeah. And he said, here I am. Yeah. Never stop listening. Right. Wow. Yeah. Now here's the thought. What if Abraham was so deep in despair right. and so in his soul right. and he raised his hand up and he couldn't hear the, wow. the angel? Right. Oh. Come on. Think about that. Yeah. What if he still wasn't in tune because he was so deep in his soul right. and hurt and can't hear anymore because he's overwhelmed and sorrow, he would have killed his son. We never think about those things, huh? Every step of the way, his ears had to be in tune with God. Even in the midst of his hurt, in the midst of his sorrow, in the midst of his requirement of the most precious thing he believed God for. But the angel of the Lord called to him from heaven, Abraham, Abraham, here I am. And he said, do not lay a hand on the lad right. or do anything to him. Right. For now I know that you fear God. Yeah. Wow. Since you have not withheld your son, your only son, from me. What does that mean? That means that when God requires something of you, when he gives you instruction and you do not heed, that means you do not fear him. Right. That means you have no fear of God. Amen. When he requires something and you do the opposite. Wow. Amen. To not be afraid of God is suicide. Amen. 